muscles and that sort of thing. Hopefully, deep fibrillation is going to reset the heart rate. However, after if, if that takes care of the problem, it now becomes the issue of addressing why it happened and how severe was the heart attack and what steps are going to have to be taken. So in the case of that heart attack, the ventricular fibrillation, this is what shows up on the EKG. Do you notice the difference? I would hope so. So if you're doing that EKG on that person coming in the emergency room and you see that, I'm hoping you're going to go find a doctor. All right. Other arrhythmias. They can be pretty common. All right. Of course, heart attack, the ventricular one, is the most common. But now, look at what I have on atrial fibrillation and heart block. Do you notice a difference? This is why you need to understand, you need to know what the normal EKG looks like. So that if you do an EKG and it has something somewhere that is not following the normal pattern, hopefully you're going to go get a doctor. Okay? Is the heart block, are you saying there's a pulmonary embolism? No, pulmonary embolism is happening in the lungs. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, atrial fibrillation happens between my heartbeats. Do you kind of see the difference here in between those peaks? Atria, they're, they're exhibiting certain um, physical issues based on what's happening. Hopefully, the doctor's going to know how to address it or begin to address it, identify other factors, and so forth. Under heart block, which is another one that can be a little more common, under the heart block, okay, what we find is some of those atrial depolarizations, well, that depolarization, that signal, doesn't get to the ventricles. So you can kind of see a difference in between where it looks like, oh, well, wait a minute, this one looks normal, but wait a minute, where... Where did my QRS go? Okay. Do you see see the difference? Is it kind of similar then to like a heart murmur? Like would it like if it showed up on there, would it look similar to the second picture kind of? I do not want to answer that without looking it up first because I don't want to tell you anything wrong. Heart murmurs are very common. They're usually heard when you do the auscultation, the, you know, you listen yeah. with your stethoscopes. Um, on a EKG, let me look that up because I don't want to tell you wrong, okay? Because I think it's going to depend on the source of the murmur, yeah. And another, okay, would be premature ventricular contraction. This is kind of one where you're noticing hopefully the line is dipping down from the baseline significantly. So hopefully based upon looking at what should be the norm, if you do something with the EKG, you can look at it and notice somewhere something isn't matching up and there's something going on. Are you going to want us to be able to recognize each of these differences? Like, for what for what they exactly mean? The P versus the QRS versus the T? Am I going to see a chart on the test and, say, and have to say, oh, that's ventricular fibrillation? Mm, probably not. I'm going to be more interested. Can you associate the P wave 
with the SA node firing, um, the T with the that sort of thing. I'm okay. going to be more interested in that. Okay. Uh, working on some labs today. 